Hi everyone and welcome to our typical modern one-bedroom apartment. I wanted to say that I have two co-hosts today. This is the first one and the second one is sleeping, so maybe a bit later. Today I'm going to make a tour about how I live with my wife and two kids and actually show not just one apartment but two. Tell you why our apartment can be considered as typical nowadays because this apartment is not in the house which was built during the Soviet times but it was built just several years ago and as for the typical apartment in the Soviet building you can recognize this video that I made a year ago where I was showing how my mother-in-law lives in the city of Engels. Let's begin with the whole room and now exiting the kitchen this is the whole room actually it is not that small at least for us it's quite enough space here I forgot to mention that the total area of this apartment is 38 square meters a bit more than 400 square feet and yeah we live here with two kids all the design that you see here except for the furniture is the design from the developer. So this flat was bought in this condition. The wallpapers, the floor covering and the tile in the bathroom, which I'm going to show, this was made before we moved here. I suppose it is quite common to have the open storage for coats, like I showed in the previous videos, and it is present here as well. Some extra shelf for hats. But for other autumn and winter clothing, we have this wardrobe. We have it separated, like the clothes of my wife and my clothes, as well some storage at the top level and as well some extra storage for footwear. However, this is just a very small part of space that we have for storage because one of the things that is different between modern apartments and Soviet ones that in the modern apartments it's more common to have a walk-in closet room. Here it is. As you may see, it is a small but quite spacious room where we have a lot of extra clothes and when we received the keys it was just a room without anything so all this shelves and just the way to organize the things here this is something that we created ourselves a vacuum cleaner right there and by the way this is not the end of the room so my hand can go really 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 deep Getting back to the hole, we have some small shelves here where we store some footwear for kids, some aroma candles, the panel to control the electricity, and yeah, you may see that in terms of electricity we are quite responsible just collecting some used batteries. Later we'll take them to the service where they will be recycled accordingly. The next room in front of me is bathroom and toilet room, they are combined. And this is how everything is organized. By the way, a reminder, once again, the design was made not by ourselves, but by the developer. What is she doing? <laughs> so you may see the washing machine, as well some power sockets for a hair dryer or other things, a sink, and a mirror which is quite compact, but more than enough to see everything you want to see. We have a cat, so cat is using this room as a toilet room as well, and a bathtub 170 centimeters long, with some extra storage for shampoos and all that stuff. But as well, we have this shelf where the majority of other chemicals are stored, and by the way, you may see that kids cannot open the lower part because we have this lock which they cannot reach. Let's go to the kitchen. And yeah, here she is. Yeah. Seems to be a bit shy now. Again, despite the fact that the whole apartment is not that big, kitchen is actually considered to be quite spacious. 12 square meters, or about 130-140 square feet. Some of you can think that it is still a small one, but believe me, a lot of Soviet apartments have very small kitchens, like 4 square meters or 6 square meters. This is quite common in the old houses. So 12 square meters, believe me, it's quite good. And this is how everything looks like. That is the kitchen itself, with some extra lights here. Sink, some space, an electric oven to bake something and to fry something. In many new houses, gas is restricted, so the only source of energy is electricity. And as well, a coffee machine, a kettle, and one refrigerator with, with some personal touch. And extra thanks to those of you who sent me some souvenirs some time ago. I believe that storage space is quite enough. Here we have 
some clean dishes and cups, some spices and rice, spaghetti, noodles, some jars of honey and some extra food that can be stored for a long time. Some extra glassware here and basically a lot of tea. Yeah, Russians drink tea, you know. Some medicine as well and it's stored here once again so that kids could not reach it. What is cool that even a balcony isn't present in this small apartment, I will show it to you in a moment. And a table. Hello there. I don't want to unfold the table, but you can drag this part here and there is the same extension available from that side. If we have six or eight guests, sometimes everybody can find a place to sit. A couple of chairs for kids and actually your chair is that one. I think I showed you the storage of everything that is required on the kitchen, but what for do we need this? Kids! Yeah, a lot of toys, guys. Those of you who have kids, I guess you understand me well. Now let me show you the balcony. It is actually quite spacious, because maybe you know that many Russians use it as a storage room, but as I showed, we already have a lot of space for storage. We do still have some things stored here, but it doesn't take that much space. As you may see, yeah, somebody is not behaving well, as you may see, there is a lot more space here, and kids are playing when it is warm. Now it is a bit cold, so you need to get back. Пойдем. And the final place to show here is, of course, the bedroom. I think that I am not that loud right now because somebody's sleeping and I'm not talking about you, but about you, my darling. If you are watching my channel for some time already, you might recognize this background because that's where I'm usually making my videos. The bedroom is 14 square meters or about 150-160 square feet. First of all, the master bed, quite a spacious one. And we have two extra beds, one you just saw, and the second one is here. But if you are a parent yourself, you could have realized that these beds are not often used because everybody sleeps with us on the main bed. Getting back to extra storage, you may see that there is a lot of extra storage here, and we use it mainly for clothes. On this side of the bed, some clothes for myself, and here is the side of my wife and kids. Yeah, you know, I'm a big guy, that's why my clothes require more space. But as well, some storage here for kids' clothes and my wife's personal stuff, like uh, how it's called, makeup, yeah, and all that. <laughs> Next to this bed, we have a play kitchen, which is, by the way, working. You see, you can cook something here, and with a higher temperature if you want, just be careful. And some storage. Yeah, what can kids store? Nevere cream. Basically, yeah, you see, we have a lot of toys. Far not everybody has it, but I wanted to have a big TV set. So this is a 55-inch TV that I bought five years ago, and I could have bought a bigger one, but probably it would not fit here. And again, talking about being practical, we have a high bed, because we have some extra storage space there, and for that we needed to put our TV set higher, otherwise we will not see it right there. And we have some extra space for some books, books, and some other stuff. By the way, my oldest daughter, just half a month ago, started to go to the kindergarten. As I said in the beginning, today I will show you two apartments, so welcome to our second apartment, which is a lot more spacious. This apartment belongs to me partially, yeah, because I have a mortgage for many years, but still. Three years ago I was able to buy this apartment, two years ago I received the keys, and gradually, gradually I am making the refurbishment from the scratch. I made some videos about it in the very beginning, here is how it looked. Nothing was there, no walls, no electricity, no water supply, nothing. And the type of the building where it is located is actually the same as the building with the first flat that I showed. But yeah, in this case it can be a bit less typical simply because I will not be living with the same type of the design as hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people who have the design from the developer. They can be different, but still they will be the same within one building. Here I have a full freedom to do everything that I want. But the main similarities, if we're talking about the construction of the building and the type of flats, is actually 
the same as in the first flat. And here is one of the main differences between the Soviet apartments and modern apartments is that in the Soviet apartments you cannot demolish the walls. First of all, it is prohibited by law, and secondly, it is prohibited because the whole building can go down if you demolish it. Here, that's not the case. The total area of this apartment is more than 100 square meters, and here is the bathroom for guests. You see that it hasn't been refurbished, built yet. In no time this will be solved, because I already have a lot of tile, so I just need a bit of time to put it on the walls. I know your question right now. Is this something the average Russian, or at least a person living in Moscow, if we're talking about the flat in Moscow, can afford? My salary is quite average for Moscow. In addition to that, my wife is in the maternity leave for already four years, so she is not getting her salary. I'm the only person who is delivering everything for my family, and I am able to keep up with the mortgage, buy food, buy some extra stuff, and do the refurbishment, but as you may see, quite slowly. So I bought it at the price of 11 million rubles. I mean, this is the total price. I didn't have this amount of money. Yeah, I have a very, very long-term mortgage. Right now, I guess it would cost higher, simply because when I was buying it, the building was not finished yet. So at the earlier stage you buy the apartment, the cheaper it is for you. My mortgage payment used to be 58,000 rubles per month, which is right now at current exchange rate of 60 rubles per one USD, about 1,000 bucks. But there is a special program for everybody in Moscow, anywhere else, throughout the whole Russia, that if you have two kids and one of the kids is born after 2019, I guess, that's the new program, you can decrease your mortgage rate to five, six percent annually. And the average rate right now is about eight, ten percent annually. The rates did go up like crazy in April 2022, but now they went back to the previous level. And so my rate was 9.7 percent, now it is five percent, and basically I pay 37,000 rubles per month, which is about 600 bucks per month. For this amount of money per month, you can rent a one-bedroom apartment, and this is like the minimum price in Moscow. For the same amount of money, I am able to own a four-bedroom apartment. We have guests. So, what are the main differences between typical modern apartments and the Soviet apartment? First of all, as I told you, the size of the kitchen in the modern apartments is a lot bigger. And actually, it can be considered as a small kitchen slash living room. Talking about living rooms, the majority of the Soviet houses were built out of prefabricated concrete slabs, or how in Russia we call them from panels, panel houses. And so the thing is that you are not and still are not allowed to demolish any walls and make one room out of two rooms, for example. Modern buildings are built with a cast-in-place concrete technology, meaning that you don't need the actual walls between the rooms to be the ones holding the weight of the house. Something columns, or how we in Russian say pilone, which are responsible for that. In this case, the whole flat is like a big open space, and if you didn't have any refurbishment made by your developer, and you bought it without walls, without electricity, water being distributed, and you can make all the refurbishment and the design yourself, in this case you are free to make one big room out of two rooms. With some limitations, basically you cannot make your bathroom above your neighbor's bedroom. <laughs> Some below the ceiling storage places, or how I called it, mezzanine in the video about the Soviet flat, is something that I don't see now in the modern apartments. And the thing about ceilings is actually in the Soviet houses, in average, they used to be lower than in the modern houses, about like 260 to 170 centimeters high, while now the average standard is 280, 90 or 300. More bathrooms is as well another difference, because it is fine right now to have two bathrooms for a three-bedroom flat, while usually, like almost in all cases, it was only one bathroom for three bedrooms in the Soviet... Who is it here? In the Soviet apartment. As well as I mentioned, no gas as a supply for your oven. In the modern apartments, it can be supplied only with electricity. As well compared to Soviet apartments, you can remember that from my different video. I was showing that the waste disposal is actually built 
in the houses and yeah it can be comfortable if you don't want to dress up and go somewhere in the winter but at the same time inside your house there can be a lot of litter stored for quite a while which is not good nowadays you need to be more fit and more ready to go outside because no the systems are less and less implemented nowadays and you need to go outside to take out your trash another small detail to mention but quite important nowadays is the underground parking lots like <laughs> You definitely would not expect that in the Soviet houses. I very much hope that this video was quite informative for you and you enjoyed this tour. Once again, Soviet houses are still very common in Russia, but more and more newly developed houses are being built. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for watching. It was Zangief, your Russian mate from Russia. See you next time and bye-bye. Пока-пока. Пока-пока? Скажи пока-пока. Пока-пока. Bye, guys. And this is another neighborhood outskirts of Moscow, not the downtown. Actually, I'm just showing how it is here right now.